I desperately need you guys to leave here understanding how ridiculously lucky we are to be alive during this era. This internet thing is no joke. No joke. And, and I just, and, and by the way, for everybody who gets a trillion followers and makes it and, let, I mean, Justin Bieber, YouTube, like it's now been a while since this has been happening and working. I think for a lot of this room, you may not go on to be Bieber or build a YouTube channel that makes $80 million selling toys, but the real conversation that isn't being talked about is I do believe almost everybody in this room is uncomfortably capable of producing a $100,000 a year business if they put in a lot of time and a lot of effort and have skill, whether that is through making a channel and having brands subsidize that or selling stuff or starting a product. And, and I hope that everybody who watches this that's not in here or even the people in here realize that that's a big statement. That's a lot of money. It just is. And, and I say it so simply, but it's not simple at all. But the fact that you can in a way that you never could before is remarkable and I think all the people you look up to or you admire or you watched build real businesses or real influence on these platforms, they're the preview, not the anomaly. And not everybody's gonna have my natural talent or work ethic or the chips fall the way they did, but I don't, I want people to love their game the way I love it not get the accolades or success that I have because the happiness is way more fun than the byproduct. And I know a ton of people who are unbelievably happy and make 49,000 a year and I know an enormous amount of people who are deeply unhappy and sick who make $7 million a year. And something I've been saying a lot and I want to say more often, there was always that joke that people talked about like, around always valuing money and they talked about, I'd rather cry in my Ferrari, right? And I, that, that saying always pissed me off, right? This notion that, okay, you're crying, you're deeply unhappy and the Ferrari versus a Toyota is supposed to be some sort of variable there. It's, it's such insane bad talk. Everybody should aspire to be smiling in their Toyota. If you find out and understand yourself and you put yourself in the best position and you happen to have talent and you put in a ridiculous amount of work, then you might be able to smile in your Ferrari. And that's amazing too. Trying. You know, some days something happens in the office and even though I'm going to like a family holiday dinner, I just can't get over it because I haven't figured out the solution yet. For me, I've got a lot of experience and I also, to be frank, am wildly not that concerned about money slash my business. I'm really not. I just don't know what else to say and that's not because I've done well. I was that way when I was grinding and building. Like, it's just, I just don't put business, it's my greatest passion and it means nothing to me. I'm being dead serious. Because I know that if I built a billion dollar, trillion dollar thing, bought the jets, and my family dies in a plane accident, I'm not a happy person. So perspective really helps me. It's if everyone's alive, I'm good. I struggle with taking people's judgment, both cheers and boos, so that's good. So I'm just kind of cruising. But the biggest, but the answer I'm giving to you that I think will help you is not necessarily where I'm at at 43 years old, with. 37 years of practice in my mind, it's where you're at. And to me the answer is don't overjudge yourself if you can't. It's only one day. If you have something going on in a personal relationship that screwed up your day at work because you couldn't get going, that's okay. That's not only okay if you screw up a day, it's okay if you waste a week, it's also okay if you waste a month. My biggest thing is why are we overjudging ourselves? We're just all living out here. I probably once a week to four times a week sit there truly in the shower on a flight when I wake up. Some people meditate. 
right? Some people work out, right, to deal with whatever anxieties or thoughts they have. I actually sit and truly try to convince myself that I have lost one of the five most important people in my life and that is the biggest thing I do that leads to the biggest happiness I have. Like, what? You didn't sell enough earrings today? Like seriously though, people lack perspective. It, it's actually remarkably easy if it, became, if it becomes the way you see the world. Like what? What? Like we have completely lost perspective as a society. Do you know how many people on earth have it way worse than you? Billions. I, know, but you I just help. want to remind everybody, we're sitting in Manhattan right now. <laughs> we have completely lost perspective. So it is easy for me because I've practiced that perspective because I grew up hearing the stories of my mom losing her mom at five, my dad losing her, his dad at 15, them being in the Soviet Union. I remember sitting in a studio apartment with eight family members and having nothing. Like, I don't know, it's very easy. You're 23, you're winning. I know, I have your quote on my phone that says you could go hard for 10 years and, and do everything wrong and get up and still. It, it doesn't mean that you're not trying to do the best you can and what have you, but you have to quantify that emotion. You know? My biggest thing to you is you have to make sure that you eliminate judgment. Where everyone's losing is they're worried about what other people think. Everybody, everyone's losing that game. Because the reason I can deal with losses every minute is I don't care what you're saying about my loss. I love this when athletes get to this level. The reason they're doing well is they don't care what ESPN said or what you said on Twitter. They're playing, you're in the seats. And that's how I think about everybody. I'm playing. What, you're gonna say I had a bad idea or it didn't work, I'm playing. And so I think that may help you too. Like at this day and age, nothing is private. It's like everyone knows everyone's business. That's so not it's true. Like, I'm minding my own business. That's not true. You guys know no nothing about. You know nothing about my family. What are, what what people put on social media? That's you pay the consequences. Everyone thinks they know about you, even though they don't. That means you're worried about their opinions. No, I mean I personally. Good. Like, don't, but. So then go back to your question, so I can help you because I'm enjoying this. What? You know, what, what's, you know, what's easier said than done for you? No, because I feel like What I, bothers you? I feel like I constantly am getting distracted. By? By just being 23 and that, uh, and that life outside of business. Makes sense. There's, there's just so, there's so much ahead, but like you feel... Like you're like missing out? No, 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 not, no, not at all. But like you feel that... Like there's a lot of time, but there's not. Like you have, you're in your 20s, you have all these good years, and it's very like I'm 20. Let me tell you about your 40s. They're fucking good. <laughs> I get it, I get it, and you'll appreciate this, and I'm glad we did this. That's why I talk about patience. Yes. <laughs> you know, because you, what you're actually saying is you're impatient, and that's okay. No, no, I'm not. Okay. Um, you are. <laughs> But that's okay, no, go ahead. No, I'm patient, but now it's gonna sound like I care what people think, but I feel like everyone is like always in my business, like, oh, when are you doing this, and when are you doing that? And why are then, you, why are you listening? And it makes me unpatient, even you, though I'm patient. No, no, it makes you impatient because you're valuing other people's opinions. You just literally made both of my points. <laughs> <laughs> literally. No, you, but it's like you said, people, I don't care what anybody thinks, and I'm patient, and then your answer to it was, people are in my business saying shit, which makes me impatient. I think I'm starting to get to the point in my life where I'm also really fascinated about the advice I gave to the first question about why was I so scared about losing family as a kid? I've been thinking a lot lately about a re the only reoccurring nightmare I ever had in my life when I was seven to nine of this, I mean just, I had it a lot, which was we would go back to Russia on a flight and the plane would go down, right? And I'm just really thinking a lot about it. I'm thinking about what made me so scared, you know, why did I love my parents so much, like all those things and, and what did that do to my perspective and why did it put things in perspective and 
you know, I, I didn't realize being happy or positive as a kid was a business advantage, but I definitely believe that without optimism, you can't be an entrepreneur, right? It's all, it's like you have to believe, like, cause it's super hard. So I do think optimism and positivity are incredible ingredients, but I think people have to be very careful because the other thing is I'm extremely practical and lack delusion. And being optimistic and positive leads to delusion for a lot of people. This is where self-awareness and accountability really matter. You know, just saying it isn't gonna get it done. And so, yes, positivity is the absolute game, um, but so is practicality.